Good evening. I'd like to provide the American people with an update on our efforts to protect the integrity of our very important 2020 election. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. If you count the illegal votes, they can try to steal the election from us. If you count the votes that came in late, we're looking at them very strongly. But a lot of votes came in late. I've already decisively won many critical states, including massive victories in Florida, Iowa, Indiana, Ohio. To name just a few, we won these and many other victories despite historic election interference from big media, big money, and big tech. As everybody saw, we won by historic numbers. And the pollsters got it knowingly wrong. They got it knowingly wrong. We had polls that were so ridiculous, and everybody knew it at the time. There was no blue wave that they predicted. They thought there was going to be a big blue wave. That was false. That was done for suppression reasons. But instead, there was a big red wave. And it's been properly acknowledged, actually, by the media. They were, I think, very impressed. But that was after the fact. That doesn't do us any good. We kept the Senate, despite having twice as many seats to defend as Democrats, and in a really uh, much more competitive states. We've uh, — we did a fantastic job with the Senate. I think we're very proud of what's happened there. We had many more seats to defend. They spent almost $200 million on Senate races in South Carolina and Kentucky alone, two races, and hundreds of millions of dollars overall against us. At the national level, our opponents' major donors were Wall Street bankers and special interests. Our major donors were police officers, farmers, everyday citizens. Yet, for the first time ever, we lost zero races in the House. I was talking to Kevin McCarthy today. He said he couldn't believe it. Zero races. Very unusual thing. Zero. And actually won many new seats, with, I think, many more on the way. This was also the year of the Republican woman. More Republican women were elected to Congress than ever before. That's a great achievement. I won the largest share of non-white voters of any Republican in 60 years, including historic numbers of Latino, African American, Asian American, and Native American voters, uh, the largest ever in our history. We grew our party by 4 million voters, the greatest turnout in Republican Party history. Uh, Democrats are the party of the big donors, the big media, the big tech, it seems. And Republicans have become the party of the American worker, and that's what's happened. And we're also, I believe, the party of inclusion. As everyone now recognizes, media polling was election interference in the truest sense of that word by powerful special interests. These really phony polls, I have to call them phony polls, fake polls, were designed to keep our voters at home, create the illusion of momentum for Mr. Biden, and diminish Republicans' ability to raise funds. They were what's called suppression polls. Everyone knows that now. And uh, it's never been used to the extent that it's been used on this last election. To highlight just a few examples, the day before election, Quinnipiac, which was wrong on every occasion that I know of, had Joe Biden up by five points in Florida, and they were off by 8.4 points, and I won Florida easily, easily. So uh, they had me losing Florida by a lot, and I ended up winning Florida by a lot. Other than that, they were very accurate. Uh, they had him up four points in Ohio, and they were up by 12.2 points. And I also won Ohio, great state of Ohio, very easily. And the Washington Post said Biden up 17 points in Wisconsin, and it was basically even. They were off by about 17 points. And they knew that. They're not stupid people. They knew that. Suppression. There are now only a few states yet to be decided in the presidential race. Uh, the voting apparatus of those states are run in all cases by Democrats. We were winning 
in all the key locations by a lot, actually. And then our numbers started miraculously getting whittled away in secret, and uh, they wouldn't allow legally permissible observers. We went to court in a couple of instances, and we were able to get the observers put in. And when the observers got there, they wanted them 60, 70 feet away, 80 feet, 100 feet away, or outside the building to observe people inside the building. And we won a case, a big case, and uh, we have others happening. There are a lot of, lots of litigation, even beyond our litigation. There's tremendous amount of litigation generally because of how unfair this process was. And I predicted that. I've been talking about mail-in voting for a long time. It's, uh, it's really destroyed our system. It's a corrupt system. And it makes people corrupt, even if they aren't by nature. But they become corrupt. It's too easy. They want to find out how many the votes they need, and then they seem to be able to find them. They wait and wait, and then they find them. And you see that on election night. We were ahead in vote in North Carolina by a lot, tremendous number of votes. And uh, we're still ahead by a lot, but uh, not as many because they're finding ballots all of a sudden. Oh, we have some mail-in ballots. It's amazing how those mail-in ballots are so one-sided, too. I know that it's supposed to be to the advantage of the Democrats, but in all cases, they're so one-sided. We were up by nearly 700,000 votes in Pennsylvania. I won Pennsylvania by a lot. And uh, that gets whittled down to, I think they said now we're up by 90,000 votes. And they'll keep coming and coming and coming. They find them all over. And they don't want us to have any observers, although we want a court case. The judge said you have to have observers. Likewise, in Georgia, and they're appealing. Actually, they're appealing. Uh, we want a case that we want people to watch, and we want observers. And they're actually appealing, which is sort of interesting. I wonder why they'd appeal, that all we want to do is have people watch as they do the vote tabulations. Likewise, in Georgia, I won by a lot, a lot, with a lead of over getting close to 300,000 votes on election night in Georgia. And by the way, got whittled down. And now it's getting to be to a point where I'll go from winning by a lot to perhaps being even down a little bit. In Georgia, a pipe burst in a faraway location, totally unrelated to the location of what was happening. And they stopped counting for four hours. And a lot of things happened. The election apparatus in Georgia is run by Democrats. We also had margins of 300,000 in Michigan. We we're way up in Michigan, won the state. And uh, in Wisconsin, we did likewise fantastically well. And uh, that got whittled down. Every, in every case, they got whittled down. Today, we're on track to win Arizona. We only need to carry, I guess, 55 percent of the remaining vote, 55 percent margins. And uh, that's a margin that we've significantly exceeded. So we'll see what happens with that. But we're on track to do OK in Arizona. Uh, our goal is to defend the integrity of the election. We'll not allow the corruption to steal such an important election, or any election for that matter. And uh, we can't allow silence anybody to silence our voters and manufacture results. I've never had, I've been doing a lot of public things for a long time. I've never had anything that's been as inspirational by people calling, talking, sending things to us. I've never uh, seen such uh, such love and such affection and such uh, spirit as I've seen for this. People know what's happening and they see what's happening and it's before their eyes. And uh, there are many instances which will be reported very shortly. There's tremendous litigation going on. And this is a case where they're trying to steal an election. They're trying to rig an election. And we can't let that happen. Detroit and Philadelphia, known as two of the most corrupt political places anywhere in our country, easily cannot be responsible for engineering the outcome of a presidential race, a very important presidential race. In Pennsylvania, Democrats have gone to the state Supreme Court to try and ban our election observers.